video I will introduce you how fuel arrived from Germany to the troops, then I will show you how the panzers were actually refueled. A German panzer division required 30 tons of supplies per day when inactive and up to 20 times more per day in fighting. Food and equipment requirements are relatively constant but fuel and ammunition change depending on the combat conditions. German factories shipped fuel, oil and lubricants to depots in Germany. These depots then shipped their supplies by railroad to railheads on the fighting front at the rear of an army where unloading ensued. The divisional organic supply columns of motorized vehicles then moved fuel from the army dumps to the divisional collecting points. Finally, the battalion supply columns picked them up from the divisional collecting points and delivered them to the combat troops through battalion or company distribution points. Troops themselves would go to these points for a supply. German divisional supply was organized to permit splitting the division in two or more task forces or Kampfgruppen in German as required. The system was flexible enough to swiftly support the advance or to stop enemy countermeasures. Rerouting through friendly controlled areas was common and in some cases airlifting the fuel was the only means to handle a critical situation. And now let's see how panzers were actually refueled. Tactical refueling or refuel on the move allows a unit to sustain long distance movements and is normally found at the end of an approach march. After the missions were completed, the tanks returned to an assembly area, which is a place where the rest of the company is located. The tanks formed a defensive perimeter to prevent enemy attack while they refuel, rearm and get food. The German army used hand pumps to pump fuel into their tanks by hand. The German Air Force, by the way, did the same. But the main difference between the Luftwaffe and the army pump models was the size. The army pumps were smaller because the army units had to move regularly during operations with all their equipment. That is the reason for lighter and not so complicated equipment as the Luftwaffe used the pumps on their static airfields. Mobile or static anti-aircraft guns protected the area where all vehicles went to get refueled. Vehicles weren't allowed to just go up and get fuel whenever they want, it was all planned out according to how far the vehicles were likely to travel and how much fuel they would use. A Panzer III tank had a single fuel tank that contained 310 liters of petrol. The Panther tank had five built-in fuel tanks holding about 750 liters of petrol. If the fuel tap was set to main tank, then about 600 liters was available. The other 150 liters consisted the fuel reserve and could be accessed by switching to the auxiliary tank. The content of the reserve tank was sufficient for a road journey of between 30 and 40 kilometers. The Tiger took 534 liters to fill its four fuel tanks, two on each side of the rear engine bay. That was equivalent to 27 jerry cans containing 20 liters each or 3 times 200 liter drums. One 3 ton supply truck such as the famous Opel Blitz could carry 110 jerry cans or 11 barrels of petrol, enough for 3 Tiger tanks.